What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football Channel. As always, it's your boy Nick. Coming at you with another team outlook. We are wrapping up the AFC East today. We already hit the Patriots, Bills. Ah, I got something in my mouth. I think it's my mustache. Can't get that out of there. We're going into the New York Jets today. I figure it's a good day. It's Monday. No one likes Mondays. No one likes the New York Jets. So we're good to go. Gang Green, let's get it. All right, let's start this off by letting you know that Vegas has the Jets tied for the lowest win total at four and a half right now. Just want to throw that out there before we even start. The Jets are going to be bad this year. They brought in Josh McCown, played in Cleveland last year, to battle for that quarterback position. Uh, it seems like they're tanking this year, so I'm not really sure why they're bringing him in. I mean, I guess I, it would make sense because they have Bryce Petty and Christian Hackenberg, who both have proved absolutely nothing. They looked awful last year, so for the sake of fantasy purposes, let's hope Josh McCowan wins that job. At, at the least, he'll be like somewhat competent, even though he played poorly in Cleveland last year. I think if Petty or Hackenberg win that starting job, it's just going to be an absolute shit show there in New York. I mean, either way, there's you're not touching any of these quarterbacks regardless, so let's just move right into the weapons. Let's start off with Kinsey and Nunwa. So Brandon Marshall's gone, lands with the other New York team, the Blue Squad. Eric Decker, also gone, lands with Tennessee. Leaves Kinsey and Nunwa as their number one guy. Coming into last year, I can guarantee you he was drafted in 0.0% of leagues. But he's forced into that number one role this year. He will be the number one wideout on their team. He's a big dude, 6'2", 225. He's actually, he has the build of like a proto, not even a prototypical wide receiver, like a proto, almost like Adrian Peterson he looks like. This guy is ripped, he's jacked, he's big, he's long, and he did some damage last year for the Jets. What I see Kinsey Inunua as this year is, think of what Robert Woods is in the Rams offense this year. Kinsey Inunua is a very rich man's version of that. Shitty offenses with no other weapons around him. So he should see by default a ton, a ton, a ton of targets. So we look back at last year, and Anunua had like a semi-breakout year, you could say. Finished with 58 catches, 857 yards, four touchdowns. Now, he, he lined up on the opposite side of Brandon Marshall, one of the elite red zone targets in the NFL, right? Anunua still led the team in targets inside the 10-yard line. So that tells you he was either a part of that game plan or the quarterbacks liked him a lot. Which is good news going forward because he should continue to see a lot of targets down there. I mentioned before, Anunua's built really, really solidly, right? Muscular, big, tall, fast. He's in the 96th percentile in, in terms of weight-adjusted speed score. So think like Leonard Fournette's one of those guys who's really big, runs really fast. That's Anunua. Now, he was really good over the first half of, of last season, right? From weeks one through eight, or the first eight games of the season, he was a legitimate wide receiver too. He was wide receiver 20 in fantasy. Now, the overall stats that he put up kind of came at the cost of consistency. So from weeks, or for the last eight weeks of the season, he didn't play well. He had four separate games where he only caught one ball. He was fantasy wide receiver 59 over that span, but he's going at pick 108 this year, wide receiver 43. I think he's a ridiculous value this year going that late in the draft. He had 105 targets last year. Marshall's gone now. Decker, I know he only, he only played in a few games last year, but he's also gone. Anunua, by default, is wide receiver one. His target floor, if, if last year was 105, his target floor this year would be 115. I think he'll probably flirt with 120 to 130. A pick after 100 to flirt with 120 to 130 targets is insane. He should be a really, really, really valuable player in PPR games, in PPR formats, excuse me. So I'm not sure why Anunua's still going that late in the draft, and I'd be comfortable taking him in the... 7th, 8th, ninth round. When you move past Anunua, uh, the next guy on my list that I actually don't hate, surprisingly, there's one more than one guy on the wide receiver list in, in New York that I don't hate, is Robbie Anderson. He's been growing on me a lot this summer as a, as a deep round sleeper. He's getting picked as wide receiver 60, 209 off, off the board, so absolutely free. Now, he's like 6'3", 190 pounds. He's shaped like a spaghetti, right? But the kid can fly. He's got 4'4 four, four speed, and he's going to be their main deep threat. What I like about Anderson is this. Last year, um, you know, for, for his sake, it would be nice if Bryce Petty was under center because the two had a really, really, really good connection last year, a good chemistry. You look back at the four games that Bryce Petty started for the Jets, 
Robbie Anderson averaged nine targets, 77 yards, and .5 touchdowns. So that's like prorated out to a season. I didn't look at the numbers, but that's, what is it? 77 yards, 7.7, .7, half a touchdown, 310. Um, depending on how many catches, it's probably like five or six. That's like 13 or 14 fantasy points per game in a half PPR league, which is definitely good for top 20 numbers. And I'm not saying he's going to get anywhere near that, but I'm saying if Petty was the quarterback, Anderson, we've seen them two play really well together. Petty peppered him with targets last year. So I could see Anderson playing... Um, a big role this year in the offense. He should be the number two. I know there's a bunch of reports saying that Anderson's not locked in as the number two spot. They really like their rookie third round pick, Ardarius Stewart. Capital A, lowercase r, capital D. Gotta love a guy with two capitals in his first name. But like I said before, you know, he's locked in as the number two guy in my eyes. I think he easily wins that job. He's gonna see targets, right? Like I said, four and a half win total is what the, where they're at in Vegas. They're going to be throwing the ball about 774 times a game. Anderson should see his fair share. I think he's a pretty easy bet to see upwards of 85, 90 targets if he wins that job. So Anderson, definitely a late round guy. Dynasty, I don't hate him either because if they can actually figure out a quarterback for the future, this kid's only 24 years old. If they can get a quarterback, I, I mean, I don't see it in Petty or Hackenberg, but if something happens, they get a young quarterback for agency, the draft, whatever, Anderson's got some talent and I think he could really play a role in this offense as they eventually turn, I feel like they've been building for seven years, but you know, you get the point. So again, this rookie third round pick uh, out of Alabama, our Darius Stewart. Expected to battle Anderson for the two spot. I think he wins the wide receiver three role, but he's very f far behind right now. He just had two separate surgeries on his thumb and his groin. He missed all of OTAs, all of minicamp. Um, he's already way behind, and I, I really hate that. I hate that for anyone missing training camp, especially with new quarterbacks. You Josh McCown, whoever wins the job is going to be a new quarterback with our Darius Stewart. As a rookie, you need that time to develop, not only gain chemistry, but learn the playbook and really get timing and stuff in order. So it wouldn't be surprising me if our Darius Stewart actually lost the, the three spot there. Behind him, it's just is Jalen Marshall, Sharon Peak. I don't know. Guys that you're not going to need to worry about in, in fantasy football. And then as for usual, the Jets are just punting their tight end situation. They grabbed Austin Safarian Jenkins, and I had a couple subscribers uh, actually bring him up in the comment section of one of my videos. I'm punting the shit out of this. I am nowhere near touching him. He's already suspended for, was it two or three games? First two games from a September DUI back from last year. So he's out for the first two games automatically. They picked him up last season. He grabbed 13 catches, 154 yards, and a touchdown in nine games, AKA a single Rob Gronkowski game, basically. I just don't see a lot of upside in this offense. They just don't utilize the tight end in this, in this offense. The offense is just not good. Not gonna have a lot of scoring opportunities. They are gonna throw the ball a lot, but I just, I don't know. If you wanna go take Safarian Jenkins, be my guest. I feel like he's burned everyone in fantasy for the last five years consecutively. So do what you gotta do. This is all just advice. You can do whatever the fudge you wanna do. Now we'll get to the juicy, 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 juicy part, which is their backfield. They have two guys that are gonna be very fantasy relevant. I think it's one guy, we'll see how it shakes out. We obviously have Blau Powell, Matt Forte. Last year, Blau Powell actually outscored Forte in PPR leagues, RB19 to RB21. Forte won the standard league battle, RB20 versus Powell's RB24. Now, you have this new OC, John Morton, and he is saying that this will absolutely be a running back by committee. He did come out and say that if Powell was ever a featured back, he would be a no-brainer all-pro running back. Why the fuck would you not have him as your running back then? That makes literally no sense. You have the, if you, if that's what you believe and you have the option to create an all pro running back, you're just not going to do it. Doesn't make sense to me. Team that's rebuilding. Why not see what you have? I know Powell's not young. He's not like a young buck. He's, I think, 28 years old. Forte is 32, coming off a leg injury, right? He, he dealt with injuries last year. Really, really, really slow down towards the end of the season. I do think it's going to be a running back by committee. Uh, I don't think they're getting rid of Forte or anything like that. But when you look back at last year, right, Forte outtouched him 248 to 189. Powell, though, a lot of people might not know this. Powell was the fourth leading receiver uh, in the in the NFL for running back. So it was David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, James White, Blau Powell at 58 receptions. So a dynamite PPR play. What else kept Forte in was his seven touchdowns, right? Seven touchdown total, uh, which he scored three of them in one game. That stuff kept him afloat. Over the first half of the season, Forte had 72% of his touches. He had 177 touches from weeks one through eight, which means only 28% of his touches came for the second half of the season. And that's where, you know, from weeks 
nine on in games that they both played together, which was six games. Powell received 21 more touches than Forte. I don't think anyone's actually arguing here. I don't even know why I'm arguing this point. No one's going to... I would be shocked if we enter 2018 saying that Forte outtouched Powell in 2017. It's not going to happen. I think the case that needs to be made here is whether or not Powell is going to be the feature back or at least get the lion's share of touches. What I think is um, they'll split early down work. Powell's going to be a dynamite PPR play. And Forte is going to get the majority of goal line touches, goal line carries at least. What's interesting is ne both of them are very capable pass catchers, but they didn't use either of them inside the red zone, inside the 10. I think combined between the two of them, they only had three targets inside the 10-yard line. So, you know, you look at Powell, he's four years younger, so much less tread on the tires, a lot less risky and much more upside to see if he's there, if he could be your future back for at least the next two or three years. Look at how he finished last season. So when Forte got hurt and they decided to hand the keys of the backfield to Powell, he absolutely dominated. Over the last four games, he averaged just under 26 touches, 138 yards from scrimmage, and he scored three times in those four games. Now it's not fantasy relevant, but I think it is worth mentioning that in those four games, they won two of those four. So that was two of their entire five wins in the season, while Powell was featured as their workhorse. So it's kind of a winning formula for them if they feed this kid who could do it all, right? Block, pass, run. Let me read this statistic from Pro Football Focus, PFF. Among all 42 running backs with at least 100 carries, Powell ranked second best in yards per carry, third best in yards after contact per attempt, and ninth best in missed tackles force per attempt. Also, per PFF, the Jets were ranked the best schedule out of any team in the NFL for fantasy running backs in 2017. So, while you might say the Jets don't have a lot of upside in terms of scoring, they're not going to see a lot of goal line touches, they're not going to see a ton of scoring opportunities, it goes back to the fact that they're going to be a bad team. They're looking to transition their offense to a quick-hitting offense, right? They're going to be hitting a new nuance slants, they're going to be hitting their backfield a lot, and that's where Powell will come into play. Fourth best receiver in the NFL from a running back position, they're going to be trailing a lot. Powell's going to get a ton of reception. I think he gets a lot more work carrying the ball, too, because he looked so good at the end of last year. So I guess what it breaks down to is, uh, well, one, if you watch my top breakout candidates, I had Powell listed on there. There's three guys. He was one of the three that I love this year that I love to break out. I don't think it's going to be a fully featured workload for him. I do think that they will split carries. I think Powell will out touch him 60 to 40 something like that forte will get a lot of work by the goal line which which kills powell's uh, upside but the ppr upside he has is huge I, mean, I don't want people to underestimate that how good of a pass catcher he was last year right now he's getting picked 68 overall running back 26. i think that's crazy value because he's gonna have standalone value if Forte goes down, Powell automatically becomes a league winner. And that's vice versa with Forte as well. He's not going to be as effective, but he's going to pick 118 off the board, running back 37. So at the same time, if something happens to Powell, you're possibly getting a league winner in Forte. He might not be that good. His yards per carry might be sub four, but he's still going to get 20, 25 touches a game if he's the only guy back there. So I think they both hold value where they're being picked. Powell has upside, huge upside. I'm talking like RB1 upside. Forte has that too, to a degree, he's gonna be a lot less effective if he gets those touches. But I think they both have pretty nice floors. They're both, they both have shown they could be effective. Obviously, just being on the Jets is gonna hold them down a lot. They're gonna have a ton of drives that just stop dead. Thus, they're not gonna have a lot of opportunity, but the fact that they're gonna be trailing a lot is a good thing for Powell because he catches a ton of balls. And those are my, sorry I'm so sweaty. I just got back from the gym and I was feeling it. I was like, let's rip out another vid let's get it let's get it big dogs that's the video if you enjoyed if you found it helpful just scroll down a little bit hit that thumbs up button please i would forever appreciate that um go follow us on twitter if you're looking for any gear we got the fresh dad hats for the summer we got other stuff on the site as well sweatshirts crew necks whatever what's this what about this this go check out the blog and subscribe to the newsletter get discounts on the store get all the new blog posts videos all that good stuff again thank you for spending your time with me with my face on your screen i really appreciate it and i'll see y'all next time big dogs we'll start a new division i'm not sure which one yet comment what division you want to see next oh wait i always ask a question give me an over under a noon finishes inside the top 24 let's go half point ppr top 24 for Quincy and Nunois. And then Powell, top 15, half point PPR. So later, boys.